When dealing with a multiple surface enclosure, we want to develop a robust method to calculate either the heat fluxes or temperatures on the surfaces. And while the circuit approach is useful for two and three sided problems, we will develop a linear algebraic approach for more complex problems. So imagine an observer on surface one who sees radiosities of all the end surfaces of the enclosure. So you're sitting here on surface one, you get radiation from surface N minus one, surface N, etc. And so your incident radiation, G1A1, so G1 is the irradiation on surface one. And it comes from the radiosities of all the surfaces that see surface one. All surfaces that see and by C we mean in terms of the view factor, surface one. So the way we can express that mathematically is G1A1, the energy, the power that's felt on surface one, is associated with the power that leaves surface two, J2A2, times the view factor between surface two and surface one, F21, plus the power that leaves surface 3, J3A3, times the view factor or the fraction of that that sees surface 1. So you see that this is a very simple statement of the overall power incident on 1 from all other surfaces. In this compact notation, we can think about this as AIGI is equal to the sum sigma JJ AJ FJI. Applying reciprocity allows us to divide out the AI uh, or area of surface I. So reciprocity for any of these surfaces says that AI FIJ is equal to AJ FJI. So when we had the AJ FJI over here, we simply substituted we simply substitute AI FIJ for it and we divide by AI. So this says the GI, the incident radiation on surface I, is dependent on the sum of the radiosities of surface, surfaces J times the, interestingly enough, view factor from I to J. Now, understanding the fundamental definition of their radiosity. So the radiosity on any surface, including surface I or any other surface, is dependent on the incident radiation, GI, and the emission. So we know that fundamentally there's this emission, EI, from this surface, and there's the reflection, uh, which is rho GI. So these two together it will be considered Ji. In terms of the surface properties, it's epsilon i EBI plus 1 minus alpha i Gi. Because it's gray and diffuse, we have made alpha i epsilon i. So that's why we get this relationship here. What we're going to do then is we're going to substitute the definition of GI from all the other surfaces into this GI def into this JI definition where we have GI explicit there. And uh, as you see, we have that JI, the radiosity of surface I, depends on the radiosity of all the other surfaces. And what is important to, to grasp here is that this represents a system of equations. So if you had this as a three-sided enclosure, as an example, it would say that you have J1 in terms of J2 and J3. So let's just look at that. For a three-sided enclosure, this might be the simple way to 
visualize that. It says that J1 minus 1 minus epsilon 1 times this sum, and this sum is J2 F12 plus J3 F13 is equal to, on this side, epsilon 1, EB1. For the second surface, we'd have, let's give ourselves a little more room here, J2 minus 1 minus epsilon 2, J1, F21, plus J3, F23, is equal to epsilon 2, EB2. And the same thing happens for J3 at surface 3. J3, 1 minus epsilon 3, J1, F3, 1, plus J2, F3, 2, is equal to epsilon 3, EB3. So what you should see is that this is a system of equations. The unknowns are the J's. The knowns are, in this case, the emissive powers and the surface properties, epsilon. So we have a system of linear equations of this form. And what we typically do for problems of that type is we can write this in matrix notation as a matrix, as a matrix A times a vector of unknowns J. that's equal to some vector of knowns. And these vector of knowns are the vector of emissive powers. To solve this problem, notationally, we'd say that we want the inverse of this matrix times this vector. So I'm going to make this in a notation. So we're saying that this uh, inverse of this matrix. And now, of course, there are lots of linear algebraic methods to actually do this. And uh, some of these will be discussed later. And oftentimes we don't directly invert it, but we come up with approximations that allow us to get this information. So for the fixed wall temperature enclosure, the uh, view factors and uh, the emissivities are in this A matrix. The vector of unknowns is the radiosity, and the knowns are the emissive powers. As I mentioned before, we would invert to get the radiosities. Once we have the radiosities, then we know what the heat fluxes are in each individual surface. So once I know for four-sided enclosure or any-sided enclosure. If I've solved that I know J1, J2, J3, and J4, it's a simple issue then to find out what the heat transfer rate is on surface two, or the heat transfer rate is on surface one, etc. And the way to do that, of course, is by recognizing that we can just use the surface resistance to get the heat flux. So the heat flux is, once the, once the radiosities are known and the temperatures had already been specified so that the black body emissive power is known, we divide by the surface resistance and we get the heat flux. Now, there are other problems where, for example, uh, some surface temperatures are specified and others are flux specified. Uh, we can mix and match and it doesn't really matter uh, which some equations are going to be so-called so, so Q equations and others are going to be T equations. And so for the Q equations, um, we're simply using, again, J minus G is equal to Q. So now these are the, the J equations for, for parts of the problem which are specified in terms of Q, uh, known surface heat flux. We use this equation. For other parts of the problem, which are specified in terms of temperature and 
emissive power, we use this. And you can think about the A matrix times the vector of J. So J is still the unknown. Uh, it just happens that they're going to be uh, parts of this problem. They're going to be in terms of EB and other parts are going to be in terms of known heat fluxes. And that's not a problem at all in terms of solving the overall system of equations.